Hey everybody, it's me, I'm off camera again. Um, this is one of my pride and joys ever. This is the Iowa um, model number AN8743, record player, and this is the railroad system here. I'm going to take an overview of what this is all about. Okay, so starting off with the uh, radio player first. This is um, a 1975 model. This this has got the original um, light on it as well. And if you turn it on here, you can see that lights up really nice and green. There's also a um, an AM meter as well for different polarities of the um, actual um, frequencies and stuff. But you have to um, basically, if you've got tuned to a radio station, you would have to use dial to get a station that would be configured to this. Uh, the only thing is, is that you have to press a tuner to let it actually work like that. So it's just changed there. That's the FM, this is the FM connector here. Um, this this will actually pick up most radio stations which should be short wave, long wave, medium wave, and FM as well, which you can see on there. Which is there. And this is the, uh, Cool thing about this is it's got the actual original and dial on this as well. This is the model number. Uh, this is the AF5050, which is a very, very old model indeed. That was from 1975. Uh, this was the first, uh, this is probably the earliest model of the Iowa's that came out of the many times it was on. And we've got um, loudness, we've got uh, stereo and mono, long wave, medium, short wave, and FM. There's also this switch here, which is an AF on and on. Now, I don't know what this means, but I think it's for FM. If you turn it on, you will reduce the noise of static. Turn it off, you get all the static on it as well, which is even wonderful for that. I've had this for about five, actually for 13 years, and it's had no problem at all with this. Problem is it gets hot a lot, and it does get a lot of things in it. Also, we have here is the functions as well. We've got the phono lead, the left and right mics. Uh, so if you were to plug in a mic here, you, would, you can record it straight to cassette recorder and you can get the right one as well. But you have to have two separate ones to this. It will not work with the dual one for some reason. You've also got um, the cassette recorder, the record player, the microphone, auxiliary external tape, and the tuner as well, which is what I use a lot. But going on to the best bit, is this. This is the best bit I love. This is not a Technics uh, map, this is just a Technics map by the way. This is the um, amazing Iowa record player which has had to this day still work in good condition. This is an original, um, this is actually an original, original model that you can see here. This is the original uh, Nakaoga 8743 model of this. And this can actually come up as well. So when you, if you have a problem with this, you can turn it and then you can basically um, adjust the uh, thing on that one. It's one of the original uh, big needles they had in the 70s, which is cool. Uh, these needles cost about, probably about £25 for these, but you can get them there cheap off eBay now and stuff. But these replaceable heads can get replaced as well on this. Underneath, the electronics underneath as well for the right, the stereo inputs left and right on it. Needles in sudden, but good, good condition, kind of pumps all this at all. The other thing about it, I like about it is um, it has got the facility to um, get the, the, the line right on the record player. So for example, you can have it on two and three and stuff. It's actually set onto two and a half, which is right as where it is. And uh, the clap as well for this. So that's the look at the Iowa. But the only thing is, there's a problem with this that I have not even seen. And you may wonder, it's actually a tape recorder. This doesn't work anymore. It used to work before, but this totally died. And I'll explain what I mean. In here, all of the actual uh, things have snapped inside, and it's going to be uh, it's going to get repaired. I have got actually some replacement of these ones anyway, but the tape recorder just doesn't work. It's making that noise, but nothing nothing happens on it. Um, so that is not working. So what we're going to do. We're going to take this apart, but we can't actually access the tape recorder from the top. We have to turn it upside down and get to the bottom of it. So I'll show you that 
in a minute. Okay, I've turned off the platter, which is here, which is actually metal. You can tell it's actually metal. This, this is actually real metal. It's uh, stainless steel and it's heavy as well. This is the inside of the record player as well, which is just a plug Now, there wasn't originally a, a, an eject system on this, but I took the eject system out because it just continuously stops the end of the record. It doesn't actually have a retractor on the end of it, which actually is great. Um, this has actually been remodified by myself. I've actually took out some mod modifications and I've actually remodeled this myself and stuff. The uh, 50 hertz on this, um, I don't even know what that is actually for some reason. Some of this is in Japanese. Um, and then it says to prevent the attitude shock, do not remove cover after servicing when it's there. I've never ever had a problem with this at all. Uh, so it enables us to get to the uh, bottom of this. First of all, we're going to take off this. Now this can actually come off. Uh, uh, it's going to be a bit of a, bit of a difficult uh, camera to see this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set the camera here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this off to show you the uh, exactly what this is about. Hello. Uh, so, so, so yeah, we're going to take off this bit and this bit actually get it easy to come off. So first of all, I'll turn the power off first. And uh, power's all off now. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to take this off first. Which is sort of like that. It's actually the original Iowa lid as well. You can see. And um, now the only way we can get into the recording cassette recorder is by taking this off first before we get the bottom off of the system. So what I'm going to do. First of all, I found the easy way to do it was to put the actual middle of it and it turns over like that. And that's inside it. I'll show you inside it in a minute when I get a better camera on this. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this, this, this cable here. This is the one that's going to be disconnected now. And there we are, it's gone. And then there's another cable that goes to the transmitter, which is this red cable here. And this has actually got a wire tie on it as well. Which is there. And I'll turn it off now. This is uh, another thing that you have to have off. And then this just comes out like that. So that's all off now. So that's basically underneath it. That's all you have to try to need underneath it, really. Um, which is just that cable and that cable, really, that's it. So that's that done. So what we need to do now is get inside it. This is inside the record player here. As you can see, it is filthy. It is absolutely filthy in here. I think I need some cleaning on this thing as well. Uh, transformers up here. That's the tuning system for the radio, obviously. Most of the stuff here, capacitors, uh, still going okay. And um, heating as well, which is interesting. But we need to get into the tape recorder still. So how do we do that? Well, we have to turn it upside down first. And uh, we'll do that right now. And what we'll do is we will look inside this thing. And I noticed also there's a fan missing as well on this. I think there was a fan here. Apparently, I think this fan has been lost or probably has been uh, used by this. But that's a mystery. But anyway, let's take this apart and let's get inside the back of this as well. We're going to start using this. This is a adjustable screwdriver. Uh, now, some of the parts in here may not work and some of the parts might work. But it, it'll do for what I'm doing for you. I can't find me the screwdrivers. This is the one I got from Wix. This is about 20 quid, which is the cheapest you can get. Uh, this is, can be used for electronics as well. And the kit is complete as well with this. This is um, an original screwdriver. I don't have to charge. Kind of charge in a way. Um, there is also this extendable bit as well, which goes on the end of the screwdriver, like so. And that's it. And um, some of the screws may be a bit long for this, but we might not have to use this anyway. But for the purposes of this video, I thought I'd show this over. Uh, if, you want to, if you want to know more about this, this drill, uh, there's a link down below. It's the cheapest drill I ever bought, actually. I'm going to put it on the torque set in the three. It's on three. And there's a charger with this as well. You get a charger. And you get the screws as well with this, which is cool. Okay, so I've been at the shed. I've got the three tools here. We're using um, a Phillips head screwdriver. We're also using this screwdriver as well. And a thin screwdriver as well. Moving some parts in here, I'll have to do. So, 
let's start taking these screws out. Right, what I'm going to do first is my non piece of screwdriver, I'm going to start using this screwdriver first. So I'm going to take out these, these ones here. Now, the, now bear in mind, this is quite an old system when it came out. So, uh, believe me, this is the best thing I've ever, ever had in my possession so much. And these screws are not magnetic for some reason. No, they're not. These are pretty big screws actually. Yeah. But there is going to be a lot of screws to take out on the, on the board. So you can get inside a cassette system. And I want a cassette system working again. That actually guide. It's a shame about this. There we go. There are the screws again. Um so these screws are I mean this is a magnetized screwdriver, which is good. Um but some of these might not come out because some of the magnetism is probably dead on this thing. I bought this for £20 out of the charity shop and it was still a good working order. But then again, I threw a funny thing that was a fancy lot of this, which is really interesting to me. Uh, so, this one's going to come off for some reason. I don't know if the rubber feet have to come off, I don't know yet, I'll have to wait and see about that. Okay, there's number five, number four, four screws. Now we've got this one here, which doesn't have a screw in this one, I don't think. And this one's not a screw either. So I think we just have to take out this screw here. Nope. I wonder if we can all the screws out of here. Yeah, I think they are. Now, uh, so I've got this one screw there. This one will stay in there for now anyway. So, I think the rubber feet have to come off because I think it's part of the unit. Um, but I don't know why, but it looks like oh, this part of the unit is part of the unit. So, there's the original, the original uh, stoppers there. Interesting. I still wanted uh, to get this fixed because uh, this is actually going to be. Uh, from my point of view, this thing was just brilliant when I got it. It's probably the best ever system that Hawaii ever made uh, in the 70s. Davies ones were pretty good as well. But when I got this, I thought, oh, I've got to have this. And, you know, the vinyl collection is starting to get back in order again for it, which is good. Right. Um, now, I can't seem to get the back off this for some reason. Unless the whole unit is made from the bottom to come out. And I'll sort out later on. But what I want to show you is the back port of this. And I'll show you that right now. One thing I've got to show you was the back of it. Now here we have, um, we've got an FM antenna, which is this one here for ground. We've got uh, two of those for the, to make the, the sound system really good. We've also got E. And I don't know what E is. I don't know what, I've never found out what E, what e is on this. And AM for your AM feed as well for this one. This will actually take um, the old antenna styles. So you'd need like one of the big round antennas to put like two wires in this. Then you'd have to coil it around there, then put a wire at the top. Um, well, that, I've actually realized that yes, it, it actually makes improvement for this. But that's a three connector for this for some reason. But that AM one is really good because the AM system can really do a good job of this one as well. Uh, we've also got antenna one, antenna two. So you can switch between two antennas of, of good quality if you needed it. This is a record and play um, uh, uh, actual ex ex um, existing tape thing on this. These are never ever used anymore, these. Uh, speakers work for this, but the speakers are not on for this one. We've got O, S and C. I think O is for, um, for, the, for the output. The S is for stereo. I think C is for cut off noise. Um, that might be right, actually. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to take off, I think we've got to take these off as well, so let's take them off now. Okay, so once you've done the bottom and the top, now you've got to take off these two things here, which is the, the side things for this. And in fact, I'll just switch off the power all, all together. Don't let, don't let it keep yourself. 
Right, so this is where this screw comes in handy now. So we'll take off the four screws. In fact, I think this one would be better for me, actually. Now, this is a Stanley screwdriver. You can get it basically all over the world with these. So these is the these are the original um, arm plates for the uh, for the brackets for the uh, rubber plate. And this is uh, this probably maybe the fact you've got to take off the top of this, and these are probably all the screws to the top of the system. Um, I've never ever actually figured out why they were like this forward. Maybe I was make, I always making a, a statement of it and saying, I was great. Use these in your in your system. Yeah, whatever. So. I think these are actually um, part of the uh, things. Oh, I just uh, so that's off. That's the first one. Put the screws inside there so it won't lose them. So my hands on the wheel going. <laughs> well, I even left them anyway. Put them there. That's the first four, right? Now I need to take off this one. And it's got the information on the back of this as well, which I'll show you later in, in the video of a close up when we clean this thing down. Because we are going to clean this thing down, I need to clean this thing down. And I'm going to show you how to clean these as well and make it even fresh and to get it all nice and tidy. And check a few little components, make sure the components are okay, make sure the capacitors are fine. And uh, we really get into this tech core, obviously, because I want to do it for us. Yeah, I actually never knew what that was for, that. I think that was for just a dust record cleaner. The rail cleaner was not actually supplied with this record with this record player and uh, the stereo system. Um the loudest it can go to is probably about 100 decibels and you can put it into a system and it's, and it's really interesting. Ah yeah, the top has come off. So that's something I didn't know about. You know the top comes straight away with this one. Okay, okay. So we took the bottom off, we took the, the, the these uh, screws out. Now I'm hoping this is gonna lift off perfect. It doesn't seem to come off for some reason. Well, maybe we have to set the front off. Uh, hmm. I think we'll find out where this goes. And there's a screw there. That's a long screw. Interesting. Um, so, how are they going to get into this? I don't know. But I know for a fact it lifts up. But there's also something in here I've noticed is wedging it. There's a piece of metal in here, wedging this for some reason. Yeah. I, don't know if, I don't know if I can just get this one because it looks like I can't. Um, I think there's a screw or something holding this in, in place because I can't see, I can't really see anything in this actually. Uh, I can see transformer. But there's something holding this in place, it might be the jack door actually. Not the jack door. But this does come off, this side is off. So maybe the screw's holding it in place, so I'm going to check that right now actually. Right, I'm just looking to see if any screws are missing in here or anything I'm missing at all. And looking inside it, you know, all the screws are out. But it's still a mystery, it won't come out for some reason. Oh, there's a screw there. There was a screw, wasn't there? There's a screw here, actually, that I missed off. Pull in the middle of it. So the bottom bit didn't need, didn't need taken off, but it doesn't need to take the top off for some obvious reason. Come on, come on. You know, after having a magnetic screwdriver, it would have been easy for me, but I can't seem to get the screw up. <laughs> These are these are actually the very old long long type of screws. These these uh, spirit ones. Yeah, it looks like I can't get it out. I can't I can't get it out. But it's just getting hold of it. But it might pop out. Let's turn it over. And it has popped out as well. And there they are. Long screwdrivers. Do not lose these. They are very important. So hopefully now this will come off. There we go. Comes off like so. And oh god, this is this is this is crazy. This is crazy! Right, so what we've uh, got in here is we, well, we'll touch off first. We need to disconnect. There's a wire that's, that's holding in two, uh, there's a wire holding in two 
of these things. And I don't know where that type of connector is. It may be the fact, it might be just... Maybe this, maybe this has to... Hmm, this is really weird. Um, yeah, I'm going to take out of one thing. So. Okay, tops off anyway, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to just count those wires underneath and see if there's any uh, anything holding this. Looks like there is something holding on it. Ah, yes there is. There is a uh, there is a part in here which is uh, making it from uh, pinging this. Right, I think I'm gonna have to take this holding off for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, so this uh, is wired, I think, to. This, uh, these two wires, oh, these are, oh, sorry, these are, these are recording Dolby switches. These are the voltage meters, these have to be kept in there, obviously, with that. So, I have basically realised that these two wires are just for the, um, the systems. So, there's, there's two connectors here I'm going to pull out anyway, which may be able to, uh, put these through. And there's two connectors I've just noticed here, which is interesting. Take them out anyway. I'm hoping that this is just going to be that only, that only wire. And there's a wire tie this as well. So this is going to be a bit of a bugger. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it around anyway, and I'll go to show you the cassette recorder as well. Right. Now, as I've just uh, said in my previous video, my previous, uh, I've got to turn it upside, that side was that to get the whole tape recorder. The tape recorder is totally, absolutely not working. I mean, I haven't got any leaks, but unfortunately, the old stuff's screwed inside. So, we're going to take the tape recorder out. We're going to have a look and see what the uh, situation is with this. Right. Now, I think the first thing to do would be to that's the system there. Master pause. So I'm gonna use a these two are eagle wires. These are connected as well for some reason. Um looks like this whole unit just come out, but there is a, there is uh nothing holding this actually. So that must give me a sign that this uh, unit was was loose. So that, that's a good start. So a lovely feeling you have to take out the screw here in the corner, which is this one here. And this will um, rise up that uh, mechanism. Well, I realised that uh, the tape recorder is going to be difficult to get out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in here because it looks very complicated to get out and I'm not going to even attempt to take out any of the, uh, the connectors in this because this is really a jumble jumble jumble. Having said that though, um, I, I, I really want to get this working but um, I, I really think it's a waste of time to be honest. <laughs> but Mostly the rest, yes, this is mostly the, uh, the problem I've got, which is this thing. It, it doesn't, it does play, it doesn't play, it doesn't work. It needs two new, um, two new bands in it, that's what it needs. Um, but everything else is fine. Um, it just needs cleaning and stuff. Um, and um, and I've also noticed that there is some, uh, some, oh, some weird stuff in here, basically. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of electronics in here, which is really interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do now, what we're going to do now, we're going to clean try to clean half this up because it's an absolute mess. I've got my uh, Union Jack uh, cloth here. I've got some lukewarm water, not too hot water. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go inside all the parts that need cleaning and clean it for a bit. So a little bit of that, a little bit of water. And let's uh, get it clean on this thing. That's why I'm going to clean the buttons inside the uh, tape recorder. Like I say, tape recorder does work it is filthy in here. It is bloody filthy. Jesus. You know, I never knew this thing was so old. It simply is absolutely scruffy in here. The heads are scruffy as well. 
and the poor head's absolutely monkey as hell. Well. Not as soon as we've been days. <laughs> anyway, we've done that. You know what? There's all the crap in here as well, which you can, you can, I mean, you can tell. So this, when this machine was, when this machine came out first, it was a great machine when it was released by the guys in Japan. Uh, but this was actually being taught in, in Singapore. So, you know, how the hell the guys were doing this sort of stuff, beyond me, for some reason. Uh, I think, I wish there was a way I could take, I wish there was a way I could get, I could get this, this uh, wire off here. In fact, there's some tape here holding this. So that might be enough. No, I can't. Oh, actually, I could take that out. I might need a, uh, um, a little bit of a, a screwdriver, actually. So, I'll see if I can just pop this out here with this. Uh, and it pops out, I just like that. And that should be tight. Says hmm. but the thing about it is it's actually just, just jumbled in there for some reason. I don't know if that was meant to be like that or not. And I've opened the bin, I think it was meant to go over and under. But anyway, that's that part done. So uh there's a bit of snap floor as well. So I'm gonna start cleaning this down now, so I'm gonna move that out of the way. And I'm gonna take my cloth again. And I'm gonna basically just go around this thing because this is monkey. <laughs> I mean, some of this has been, uh, some of this has actually, been, you know, when you can, you can tell from when it was used, um, you know, it's, it's probably the fact that it's, it was used a lot in, uh, in its uh, existence. But you know, the thing about it is, cleaning these things up makes it a real, a real, real difference as well. For, this is this is going everywhere on this uh, leak actually that <laughs> I'll put it in the celebrations tin as well. So uh, that's that. Okay, there's the uh, clean thing. Be back to for a minute for that. Right, next thing I want to do is uh, is. Get try and get some of this uh, crap out of here. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use this at all. I'm going to use some Q tips for this next bit, um, which are here. And and I'm also going to use some uh, Windex as well for this, which, has, which apparently it works great for this thing. And I have a bottle of Windex somewhere. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> In here of these areas. I have a funny feeling it is it is in here somewhere, but I, where I haven't got a clue. Um, but I'll I'll put something else. Okay. Since I didn't find my uh, tools, since I didn't find my things for this, I thought I'd try some of this stuff. This is metal polish wadding. Uh, this is uh, Used for brass and stuff. I thought I'd clean up this uh, this thing actually. Uh, this stuff is um, is very cheap to buy, but I do recommend it's brilliant for brass and also copper as well and silver. It works really well, and it comes in this tin, comes in this cloth, and you take the whole cloth out because it's wet obviously. And you know what you do? Go over the gold bits, and it gets rid of all the shite off it, which you can put on the uh, this as well. This has got glue in it for some reason. Um, could put some on actually just to keep it get it uh, nice and dry. The uh, power supply is the, the actual power supply isn't too bad actually. It is a bit dirty, but and yes, you can clean power supplies with this stuff. It will not actually do anything to it, it just won't harm it and will do it will just make it basically make it cleaner and more bright as well as do it and stuff. That's uh, really good. Okay, leave that there for a few moments. Um 
The ball isn't too bad actually, the ball is alright. Heat sink is okay, capacitors are fine. Um, yeah, I think it's just that really. It was, uh, I mean, that could do, this could do a really little bit of water actually. Uh, but I, am, I have got some really 40 actually somewhere, I don't know, but I don't know where I put it today. But, um, but no, I'll do it, I'll do it for now. I'm also going to put this up as well. With this stuff, this stuff is actually amazing when you get when you think about it. It's really, really just good, good wonders if you want to get yourself some good stuff. Get wadding, it's absolutely amazing stuff to buy. I'm going to do this in February so you can tell, but uh, who cares? <laughs> okay, do a bit of shine there. Plastic's actually not, uh, not, not too bad. This circuit board is loose as well, I've just noticed. This, uh, I think this has been taken apart before this. But this. It's supposed to have screws in it, but apparently it doesn't have screws in it. So, hmm, interesting. I'm also going to clean this as well. Grab a player. I think it's a bit of a bit of a buff and stuff. Wadding is great for just lubricants and things and keeping things clean and stuff. It's just really good stuff indeed to have this, this stuff. It's amazing. Peel off from any hardware store really, it just makes a good job of it. Uh, and the back, the back side of it is actually fine. Absolutely no problem with that at all. Which is good. And, uh, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just basically buff this up with the, the dry cloth that I used. And you can tell it's actually making an effect now, it's actually getting all there. Uh, brassy now. So let's give it a shine. It's always, it's always the front that always gets the worst. But you know, that looks really clear now. That looks much better actually. Wow. Now compared to how it was before, there's no way that that was so brighter and clearer than what it was. That, that was really, really good. And that is uh, that's good to me. Good to me. Right, it's okay transform now. Transform. Yeah, I have got a funny feeling there was a fan in this player, but someone took the fan out. Whether that was part of it, I don't know. Whether it was actually made for it, I don't know. Whether it was just made as it, as it was, I have no clue. But yeah, a fan in here. It needs to be in because you can't really run it when you're in the hot heat, the hot high stuff as well. So uh, I'll in, I will look into that later and see if there's anything else in there. Okay. Right. That looks good to me. And that looks really good. Yeah. Cleaning away is good. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to clean the record player now as well. I forgot to do that before. The wadding's actually just set it in there pretty nicely for this. And uh, remember guys, put the wadding back into this because you don't want this to, to die. Because I've noticed in the past experiences this stuff will go hard as hell. Do not leave this out. It will be good. Wadding is good. Good stuff that. Okay, so uh, moving on from uh, this, so I'll give you an update about Rockshaw Live. Rockshaw Live has been going really well, actually. Um, I've been doing really well on Rockshaw Live. It's been a hell of a success. Thanks everybody for tuning in, by the way, for the show. I've got a new show happening the, uh, next week on the show, so tune in for that. Um, go to the page, like the page. Links on the bottom of the video. Go to show more and uh, enjoy it, because I'm doing... Next week we're doing Team Week on Rockshaw Live, and uh, we want basically teams to come on the show and try if they want if they got the, uh, the music skills, knowledge skills, and music. So why not come on the show and then uh, support us, guys? Because we had a great laugh. We all had a great ball. This Rockshaw Live it was great, and uh, and it was really really cool. So uh, looking at this now, I can't believe how how bright it is. The what it was, what it was before. Uh, I wish I could show you a before and after picture of this, but. Uh, <laughs> I can't do that in this video. I don't have the software for this. Uh, but uh, that's uh, that to me looks really, really good. Really, really good. 
Yeah, that looks good to me. We have a winner. That looks great. That looks great. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start connecting this back up all together now, so if you can't get the tape recorder out, which is a shame. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that tape recorder. Might come back in another video to do that. I'm not sure. I'm not going to, I'm actually not going to connect that wire to the, well actually I could connect it, couldn't I? But I think you should have gone through like this to how it was set up before, which was ridiculous. So I'm going to stick it in. I'm going to stick it in. Where is this book? Where is this book? Where There's some tape on this, I have to try and hold this on the tape, but you know, I don't care, it's going to, it's just going to sit there anyway. Um, in fact, it looks like this tape's going to need to do some tape on this. Tape on tape? Hmm. Tape on tape, indeed. Yeah, this is going to need to be tape on this. Um, Luckily, I do. I don't have any any tape with me at the moment, but for now, for temporary sake, I'm going to stick it in as it is. So that can uh, hopefully that should. In fact, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it out for now until this is taken out. I'm going to leave, leave it as it is. I'm not going to use that. Um, so let's put this back on. Should hopefully go in there and put this put this cable on because I'm not going to use that. And there it is. There it goes back on there. Like I say there's some bits in here which have been come off, but I can easily just sort it out in a minute when I get the little pieces back together for this. Which is one thing. Find that little piece found on the floor. That's dropped on the floor. There it is. Oh. Oh, it looks like it's actually on it inside. Yeah, I can't get this off now. <laughs> I can't get it off. For some reason. Why is that? When you went off, you should come off. You went on. There we go. It's off. Right. These bits went inside here, didn't they? Oh, there we go. That's how we do it. Sideways. Find another bit now. Another bit isn't here. Oh, whatever. I'll spell it. I'll, I'll, I'll find later on. On there now. Okay. Right, top's on. Um, okay. Now I'm gonna just reset these because they need to be reset right when I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it later on. And uh, now I'm going to assemble the rock player back together. So this is why. Oh, actually, I need that last because we need to turn it upside down again. And I need to put in the screws for the rock player that we need. So, I'm going to put the big ones in first. There was, one more screw, there was one more screw that goes somewhere. Where that is, I don't know. <laughs> I will find it in there. Oh, I found the plastic bit.
Bitte. So now we need to put these screws back in. So we've got to try and find out how where these screws went. And one screw went here. Here, one in here, and one more screw goes in the middle. I think, yes, it does. One more screw in the middle. And that is the screws in. Put all the screws in there at the plan. I'm sweating like hell. There we are. Back sides all on. Now all I've got to do is put these washers on now. And then we'll be able to uh, test out. I also noticed that the rubber feet are uh, broken as well, and they need some new, new uh, rubber feet on these. Which is easy, which is very easy to do. Uh, very easy to sort out. So, that's that one. And then that one. And the last one. Goes in there. Okay, that's the back on. Now, turn it over, flip it over, and we've got three connectors to connect up to the right up there. So, let's get this thing back in here, and uh, it's easy to do, very easy to do. Um, so, first of all, we turn, we put like a player like this upside down. And we take this connector, this connector goes up here, and the power is these two jump leads here, which is two um, little uh, loop plugs, which are old, which are actually these are, these are the very old uh, sockets together. So this just basically connects like this, and voila! And that's it. Okay, it's got together. Now there would be some screws for this, but um, but what I realised was the these the screws for the record player were those bongy things, and it would vibrate this a lot. I took them off, and in fact, it works better with this uh, this uh, electronic. Uh, so there we go. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to put these on record players. Okay. First of all, take this, put this around the, the drum like this. Okay, now do realise this is a quite an old uh, old thing. And you've got your band like this, okay. What you do is, you hold one of the sides like this, hold it out and turn it upside down like that. So you're holding the this, okay. Then all you do is you put the rubber plate in like that, bring it over to the latch, put it underneath the thing, lift it up, and then the rubber player is done. And that's it. Easiest thing to do, but that's only on certain ones you can do it on. But for those ones, it's uh, it's, it's not bad. Okay. All right. I think it's time we should fire this up, and uh, we will uh, be back in a minute. One thing I forgot to put on was these. I forgot to put these on. Uh, so we'll put these on now actually. Um, so because we put screws on, let's put our screws in the for the for this. It doesn't really matter which way it goes because both of them are exactly the same. They're identical to what they are. So let's just stick them in here. Which 
this one. You, you probably can't see very well the camera, but it's, uh, I don't have well, I don't have a stand for the camera, so I'm sorry if this video was was really out for you. Not the best, but saying that it's uh, it does its job. Uh, it looks like actually it's actually these are different. Oh, these are different new ones. They are apparently these don't go on this one. These go on the other one. This side. Yeah, these go on this side. Yes, I thought they went on this side. So they are different these. You would have thought it would be the same, wouldn't you? Not that I would. I would want to make things a difference. Different difficulties for some reason. Yes, we make things so good and we want to make them so amazing. I was a, I think Iowa is, um, without a doubt, I think Iowa is a great maker for Fraggle players and things. Um, this model, you might still get, get on eBay. I think the cheapest star store was probably about 50 to 60 pounds. Um, for a good one with tech player working as well on this one. This tech player was working on it originally until the tech players started to die. Um, and I think actually the, the, um, the, the two, uh, the two things on this will probably come to an end anyway, but it's tethered, so pretty much uh, pretty much tells you exactly what what it uh, what it implies of it as well. Right. Then the three. The side, two more screws go to the bottom. In fact, I realise you have to take the screws out, you've got to align this yourself. It just uh, seems to be pretty ridiculous. In fact, it's just like, yeah, you have, to, no, you have to actually decide them yourself. So you lift up. So you're having the two ones up first, and then you've got them down ones at the end. Right, there should be one more screw somewhere. There's your screw. And bring these in. And after you've done all that, and you've done it all that together, it's ready to work. Um, so fingers crossed, it might uh, just be up. Got our cable, we're going to stick it in and we're going to give it a test. Right, power's on, I'm going to turn this on as well, the mixing desk is on. And as a plug for the next video I'm going to do, it's going to be these. The Passion Record label I'm going to do next in my next video review. Uh, later on you'll see a review of this Passion Record label. Uh, I've got loads of these coming. In the next couple of months, so look out for this review because this review is very interesting. I've got to tell you a lot of information about this company, the best company ever made this. But I'm going to play one of my favourite songs on this, which is this one. And this is, out without a doubt, one of the best songs that I've ever loved since these two guys um, were from the UK. Unfortunately, they're no longer with us anymore. This is on the passion record level. This is called Save Yourself For Me. Without a doubt, 
one of my favourite ever 80s productions ever made from these two guys. And the sound quality on this is absolutely brilliant. And as you look at my reviews, the sound quality for me is what more important. So, first of all, it won't play because that is it's too heavy. So let's just the speed on this. Three and a half. That's still too heavy. To one. I think. There we go. I'll take the bass off as well. So there you are, there's a the sound. Wow. That sounds really good. And uh, you can tell this was 80s at its best as track was. Okay, so that is a uh, player playing now. That's actually the right uh, right um, height for it now. So, yeah, nice and clean now. Bugger, I couldn't get the cassette player working, but we never know if I uh, if I ever get cassette player working. And those. But I tell you, this was the best ever thing that, I, that ever came out uh, in 1975. And to me, it's just a legend thing and stuff. Thanks for watching the video. Next video, you'll see. Passion Record label, and I'm telling you guys, you're going to love this label so much. I'll tell you more about that in the next video. See you later, guys, and thanks for tuning in. Cheers.